In this video, we're going to create a notebook and populate it with documentation and code in a couple different languages. By the end of this video, you'll be able to create, share, and manage notebooks in your workspace. Before beginning, let's ensure that we are in the Databricks Data Science and Engineering workspace by selecting the appropriate item from the Persona menu. Creating a notebook is a fairly common task that data engineers need to do. For that reason, there are a number of places in the workspace that allow us to do that. In this example, let's select the Create icon in the sidebar. This opens up a menu containing some common assets that data engineers often need to create. These include Job Automate the execution of your notebooks and other workloads using the Job Scheduler. Cluster The compute resources needed to run the code in your notebooks is provided by a cluster. Table Database tables provide the ability to quickly and easily query data. Notebook Since developing notebooks is the objective of this video, we'll select this item. The Create Notebook dialog opens, prompting us for a few pieces of important information. Name. Like any other workspace asset, notebooks have names for easier identification. Note that we can change the name later if needed. Default language. Notebooks are essentially a collection of commands. Code can be written in Python, R, Scala, or SQL, providing an environment that will be familiar to both data analysts and data scientists alike. Since languages can be intermixed within a notebook, the default language specifies which language to use when not explicitly specified in a cell. Choose a language that you anticipate using the most in your notebook, but there's no need to overthink it since it can easily be changed later. And, as I mentioned, individual cells can override this choice. For now, let's set this to Python. Cluster. Clusters provide the compute resources to run the commands in a notebook, so choose a cluster for which you have appropriate permissions. You can develop a notebook without being attached to a cluster, but you will eventually need to attach one when you go to run commands in your notebook. Let's click Create and a new blank notebook opens. Let's first add some text to document this notebook. Remember that we chose Python as a default language, which means that Databricks will assume that this cell contains Python code unless we specify otherwise. So let's begin with the line %MD. This sequence is known as a magic command, and Databricks supports a number of magic commands to designate cell contents and perform various other tasks. MD is short for Markdown, an open text formatting language used by Databricks. From here, let's populate the cell. Let's create a heading with a comment. Notice the syntax highlighting that takes place as we type. As we would expect from any integrated development environment, Databricks provides visual cues to make it easier to develop Markdown and code in all supported languages. Now let's add some code to this notebook. From the cell's edit menu, let's select add cell below and a new empty cell appears below. As we're going to write this code in Python, which was the default language we chose, we don't need to begin it with a magic command. Let's write some code to read a data file into a data frame. The input file is a sample file provided by Databricks containing diamond pricing data. As it stands, this code would just silently read data into a data frame object. For an interactive development environment like this, that's not really very useful. Let's add another line to display the data represented in this data frame. With our first command cell in place, let's try running it to see the results. A couple things happen. The code is dispatched to the attached cluster, and the status of the Spark jobs that process the workload is captured. You can explore this status more deeply if you ever need to troubleshoot execution or performance problems. Thanks to the display function call, the data represented by the data frame object is nicely formatted in a table. This is a form of visualization that Databricks provides, and we can customize these visualizations to meet our needs, as we will soon see. Let's create a new cell that continues the code from the previous cell. Notebooks can be divided up this way to make them more modular and easier to manage. All Python cells will be executed within the same shell environment so that you can continue to use the same variable names and other aspects of the Python environment. In this cell, we are creating a temporary view, which is a local database table that can be queried like a normal table, but is only visible from this notebook. Temporary views are handy when you want a customized view of the data that you don't necessarily want to have to maintain in the global table namespace for everyone to see. Let's run this new cell. This time, I will use the keyboard shortcut, Control plus Enter. Now there are a couple of things that I'd like to draw your attention to. This time, there are no results displayed, since we didn't invoke the display function. And that's okay, because there's nothing new to display here. All we've done is created a new temporary table capturing the data that was already displayed by the previous cell, which was read from a sample data file. Both cells run in the same Python environment, so they can seamlessly refer to the same variables and other elements of the execution state. This would be true for any additional Python cells that we create in this notebook. Cells can be executed manually in any order you please. 
When executing cells out of order, just be mindful of the impact this has on the run state and how this may impact the other cells you subsequently execute. You should always ensure your cells can execute properly in the order they define in the notebook. We will do this shortly. Let's add another cell. This time, we'll switch to SQL. Languages can be intermixed within a notebook, but because the default language for this notebook is Python, we need to begin with the percent SQL magic command. Now, let's add a statement to query the temporary view and aggregate records by their clarity property. This statement highlights another useful application of temporary views, and that is the ability to inspect the data frame from SQL. Notice that when we run the cell, the result of the query is tabulated automatically. Since we can't explicitly invoke a display call from SQL, Databricks does this for us. Let's visualize these results using a bar graph plot. With a couple clicks, we now have a result that is more visually meaningful. There are a number of different visualization types available that can be customized and used in a dashboard if desired. Let's annotate our notebook with additional cells. Notice that using the hierarchical structure provided by Markdown, we can leverage the table of contents feature to improve the ability for others to read and navigate our notebooks. The results in execution state become part of the overall metadata that is maintained with a notebook. This can be handy as we can always refer back to the results obtained at the time the notebook was run without necessarily having to rerun the notebook. However, at times it might be desirable to clear the state and or the results, which can be done from the clear menu. Let's do a full test of our notebook to ensure that all the steps execute properly in sequence. This is an important thing to test before advancing this notebook to a production environment where it will likely be run in its entirety in batch mode. Now that we understand the basic mechanics of creating and populating a notebook, let's talk a little bit about managing and sharing notebooks with others. Suppose we want to share this notebook with a colleague or one of our customers. Copying and pasting command cells individually would be time consuming and error prone. Instead, we can export notebooks. Let's choose export from the file menu and we can see that there are a variety of options to choose from. The two options that are the most useful are HTML. Use this option if you want to export a non-interactive web page capturing all the cells in your notebook for presentation or documentation purposes. Any results that haven't been cleared will be included in the page. DBC Archive. Use this option if you want to export your notebook and its metadata in a format that's easy for others to import into their own workspace. Note, you can also export as a source file. This will generate a representation of the notebook using the syntax of the chosen default language. As you develop more notebooks, you'll need to navigate and switch between them. Use the Recents item in the sidebar to see a list of recently accessed notebooks. This list is also available on the home page. You can also access your notebooks from the Workspace item in the sidebar. This will provide a file system like Navigator where your notebooks and other assets can be managed. Within the Workspace Navigator, each element is represented as an item in the list. From there, you can create a copy of the item, rename or move it, delete it, export it, or control access. We exported a notebook earlier. Likewise, we can import notebooks into our workspace. When importing, we can upload a file containing an exported notebook from our local file system, or we can also specify a URL. In this example, I am specifying a URL pointing to a Databricks demo notebook, linked from the documentation. This video provided a quick introduction to the notebook development environment, as well as how to perform basic management functions related to the notebooks you develop. We hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching.